section 211 vaisampayana said hearing these words of yudhishthira narada replied o son of prita listen with thy brothers to me as i recite this whole story o yudhishthira exactly as everything happened in olden days a mighty daitya named nikumba endued with great energy and strength was born in the race of great asura hiranyakashipu and to this nikumba were born two sons called sunda and upasunda both of them were mighty asuras endued with great energy and terrible prowess the brothers were both fierce and possessed of wicked hearts and those daityas were both of the same resolution and ever engaged in achieving the same tasks and ends they were ever sharers with each other in happiness as well as in war each speaking and doing what was agreeable to the other the brothers never were unless they were together and never went anywhere unless together of exactly the same disposition and habits they seemed to be one individual divided into two parts endued with great energy and ever of the same resolution in everything they undertook the brothers gradually grew up always entertaining the same purpose desires of subjugating the three worlds the brothers after due initiation went to the mountains of india and wending there severe were the hazardic penances they performed exhausted with hunger and thirst with mated locks on their heads and attired in barks of trees along was the time after which they acquired sufficient hazardic merit besmearing themselves with the dirt from head to foot living upon hair alone standing on their toes they threw pieces of the flesh of their bodies into the fire with arms upraised and highly eyelids fixed long was the period for which they absorbed their vows and during the course of their ascetic penances a wonderful incident occurred there for the mountains of india heated for a long course of years by the power of their ascetic austerities began to emit vapor from every part of their bodies and beholding the severity of their austerities the celestials became alarmed the gods began to cause numerous obstructions to impede the progress of their ascetism the celestials repeatedly tempted the brothers by means of every precious possession and the most beautiful girls by firmly wedded their two the brothers broke not their vows then the celestials once more manifested before the illustrious brothers their powers of illusion for it seemed their sisters mothers wives and other relatives with the disordered hair and ornaments and robes were running towards them in terror pursued and struck by a rakshasa with a lance in hand and it seemed that the woman implored the help of the brothers crying o oh, save us but all this went for nothing for firmly wedded there too the brothers did not still break their vows and when it was found that all this produced not the slightest impression on any of the two both the woman and the rakshasa vanished from sight at last the grand sar himself the supreme lord ever seeking the welfare of all came on to those great asuras and asked them to solicit the boon they desired then the brothers sunda and upasunda both of great prowess beholding the grand sire rose from their seats and waited with joined hands and the brothers both said hand to the god o grand sire if thou hast been pleased with these our ascetic austerities on heart o lord propitious hand to us and let us have knowledge of all weapon and all powers of illusion let us be endued with great strength and let us be able to assume any form at will at last of all let us also be immortal in these words 
of theirs brahman said accept the immortality you ask for you shall be given all that you desire solicit you some form of death by which you may still be equal on to the immortals and since you have undergone these severe ascetic austerities from desire of sovereignty alone i cannot confer on you the boon of immortality you have performed your ascetic penances even for the subjugation of the three worlds it is for this o mighty daityas that i cannot grant you what you desire narada continued hearing these words of brahman sunda and upasunda said o grand sir let us have no fear then from any created thing mobile or immobile in the three worlds except only from each other the grand sir then said i grant you what you have asked and said even this your desire and granting them this boon the grand sire made them desist from their ascetism and return to his own region then the brothers those mighty daityas having received those several boons became incapable of being slain by anybody in the universe they then returned to their own abode all their friends and relatives beholding those daityas of great intelligence crowned with success in the matter of the boons they had obtained became exceedingly glad and sunda and upasunda then cut off their matted locks and wore coronets on their heads attired in costly robes and ornaments they looked exceedingly handsome they caused the moon to rise over their city every night even out of his season and friends and relatives gave themselves up to joy and merriment with happy hearts eat feed give make merry sing drink these were the sounds heard every day in every house and here and there arose loud uproars of hilarity mixed with clappings of hands which filled the whole city of the daityas who being capable of assuming any form at will were engaged in every kind of amusement and sport and scarcely noticed the flight of time even regarding a whole year as a single day thus sends the 211th section in the rajya labha parva of the adi parva